everyone and welcome back to the Open Casket Podcast. Today we are really excited as uh, once again I am Spooky Saloid. I am joined by Urschel and we have a special guest to discuss one of the big, no, the biggest pile of shit worst <laughs> fucking movie I've ever seen. Please, Breathlinator. boys. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Mr. Space Ghost Andy on Instagram? Hi, I'm Space Ghost Andy on Instagram, YouTube, and Letterbox. I am a film student, and I um, and I'm probably like <laughs> probably like the few people in the world has watched alien beasts all the way through without like killing themselves uh, I, afterwards I, I made it through one shot and I, I just have to ask are they showing this in class as something to never do well they probably should but okay i gotta explain how i came across this pe this like m this like this piece of work uh, you can uh, say i was shit. <laughs> well it's both um, it's both, um, it's a, it's a big pile of shit, but it's, like, <laughs> so fucked up and so pure that you can't, like, pure, can't, like, look, <laughs> it's pure art. It's pure fucking art, man. I'm gonna fucking blow a fuse this episode. <laughs> How is this I, I, I feel art? like, I feel like on the computer right now, I don't know if this will show up on the same, like, on the, uh, the video, but I'm in the middle. And I have I have gone from a five the first time I watched this to a one half, so I feel like I am truly the middleman between someone liking and hating this movie. I damn well oh, man. A five the next time I watch it. I don't know. Okay, okay. I gotta explain how I came across this this film. All right, I was on a Discord server, and someone on there said, "Hey, let's have a movie night," and then uh, we hop onto a call. And they showed this film called uh, Alien Beasts. And it's like the most amazing and horrible thing I have ever seen. It's like opening up the Ark of the Covenant. It's like just <laughs> yeah. pure horror. Just like pure fucking horror, man. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I like, I've been obsessed with it ever since. I've been trying to get, I've been trying to get people to watch this for like I for a while for a while now. Wait, you, like, you want people? To, you try to make your friends watch this? Yeah, kind of like kind of like the curse tape from the ring, <laughs> except <laughs> I don't think. Well, I'm still here. Hasn't killed me yet, so. Oh, it. Did I. It almost playing, killed me. Playing this, playing, playing this is a, at a movie night is like, it's either like gonna show you like people that can't be trusted because they enjoyed it, or you're gonna <laughs> just lose a lot of friends at the same time. But I do agree that I think everybody should watch this movie at no! least one time. No, nobody should no, no, watch no, no, this no, movie. No, no, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm no. not saying this is a good movie. Don't I'm not even saying this. Don't even wiggle your finger like my third it's grade not... teacher, you son of a bitch. It's, a, it's barely a movie. But if it's for not... people saying, oh, this is the worst movie ever, and you're like seeing like the latest blockbuster, like this isn't even original. This is the worst movie ever. No, the worst movie ever is very original, and it's this movie. And the reason it's yes. original is because it's so bad that you can't fathom it until you actually watch it for yourself. So you should watch this but I will say this, don't buy the Massacre video DVD. It's the only I mean, movie they don't even, from Massacre. Even... Yeah, it's the only movie from Massacre I'm glad they're holding <laughs> hostage. Nobody should watch this. It shouldn't exist. Karjay Suknik, Suknik, whatever his fucking dumbass name is, should be ashamed of himself. Okay, okay let me give some <laughs> okay. background on Karl Suknik, okay? I have a little bit more background knowledge from people I am... I hate to say this, but I run in some of the same groups that Carl Sukan. Yeah, does. the same asylums. I am, I am, I am. That's that's for big truth. I, I am good friends with Mr. Horse from Dead Format Films. As anybody who watches my channel knows, I have like every Dead Format release because we're we're homies. But um, he, I believe, knows Sukanik, and I know Jason Toth from Toxic Filth Video. That's not doxing him; it's literally on his Instagram profile. It's okay. 
Uh, he got a like a package from him, and it looked like the work of like a kindergartner that did like finger paints. <laughs> and I was shocked, and I was like, "Who?" I'm like, "Who is this guy?" And I found this movie because um, I asked for the worst movies of all time on my Instagram story, and way before the Sick on Cinema podcast boys were friends of ours or mine at least uh matt or one of them responded watch alien beast it's barely a movie and i'm like i've never even heard of this so i bought it online then i looked into sukenic and i before i watched the movie i found out that this is made by a man that blasted his brains out on lsd Uh, like to the like to the point that he can't like function properly it doesn't and he sound was on, like and, it. and he was on he was on extreme psychedelics while making this movie. Yeah. And I'm like, oh that sounds wonderful and I watch it and that's That explains everything. He, no He likes his drugs. <laughs> no I that know people explains... who <laughs> There is no excuses. I know people who do drugs and none of them are this fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is I'm, I'm... Is Sukenic made other movies. One of them's called Mutant Massacre. It's the same thing as Alien Beast, and he made Mutant Massacre 2, which is also Alien Beast with a different ending. He swaps the ending in the intro, and it still comes across as just as confusing, but he made three movies that are literally the same. And then he made stuff like Psycho... What's this one? Psycho Space Demons. Space Psychos. They're different movies, surprisingly. One of them is released by my favorite company, SRS, which spooky will start shitting on randomly, too. It won't but sh- no. They are all within the same realm of like what is this? I want someone to we haven't even described the plot of this movie. There is so none. The podcast, it's it's really, an idiot really mumbling none. during an hour an hour fourteen minutes about space lasers, FBI agents, and <laughs> security cameras being in our in I ran. Oh, oh also also uh, he has to take secret weapons to the secret weapon facility. Um <laughs> But if he's taking the weapons to the facility, why is he taking them to the weapon facility? Wouldn't he have gotten them from there? Is he returning them? Is this like a library? And there's something about Iran. He talks about Iran yeah. at one point, and then just I don't know. Like, I wonder if this was like in production during like the U.S. Iran Contra thing. Uh, when? probably. I think maybe probably. the Iran Russian thing too. Probably. I do have a strong theory that this movie is the works of a man that was on LSD and was very afraid of international conflict. Yeah, you think he did so. not know he did not yeah. know how to get this. He didn't know how to get this point across though, so he, he decided to put a friend of his in a paper mache mask to make him look like he's melting, <laughs> but the guy can't even look at the camera half the time and he keeps looking to the side. There's you also honestly... random cuts to an old man without a name. Yeah. Honestly, I have three theories about this guy. I honestly, I a a he's possibly mentally challenged, which may be true. Well, I don't B, think it's a possibility a... after finishing watching the movie. I think it's quite certain. <laughs> he has like like mental several mental illnesses, or three. See, he's. Just so bad at filmmaking. He's just like. I think it's a mix like, of all. It, it, this honestly feels like the type of movie the homeless person in your town that just yells during an hour would make. <laughs> honestly, I, after watching this a second time, I would rather watch that guy for an hour. I would. I was eating a burger the other day and there was a random man yelling at strangers, and honestly, what he was saying was more coherent than anything in this piece of shit. Alien Beast is like what the, what the homeless man yelling that the the second coming of Christ like this is what's going on in his head at all times. <laughs> man, like God, I just have to why Shit. why 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 did you give this a five? Why why name me two things that know. are good about this? <laughs> he doesn't even know. <laughs> I don't know. The, no, the, no, the, the description of the plot on Letterbox it makes is sense. probably more it's probably more well thought out than Carl Sukanik, like his entire writing process of this movie. Dude, the fighting scenes the, the, okay, I'm, okay, I'm just okay, gonna get into listen, the movie. Just... As a fan of trash, the fighting scenes are probably the most entertaining thing about the movie. If yes. I was gonna say, 
you, if I were to say one thing is like passable, it would be that like the karate, the karate fighting on his front lawn was a little. I, funny. I have to agree because I was the movie starts with just karate fighting from a very long distance, and uh, you can hear uh, Carl cough, you can hear the actors laugh. That was probably the only the best thing about the movie because that went by fast. But once it starts to get into the plot and just Carl Suknik talking over still images of random ass peoples just sitting there it's very Jean-Luc Godard <laughs> Jean-Luc Godard is rolling over his grave right now being compared to Sukenik <laughs> Sukenik is like under a bridge right now with like paint on his nose where he's been huffing it <laughs> <laughs> I what, what, is, I, what does Letterboxd even say this movie's about? It's <laughs> Carl it's, Sukenik is the commander of a branch of the CIA. Okay, I didn't get that at all. I thought Battling it was the FBI. martial arts while his dad keeps watch in the security center. Is that who the old man was supposed to be? The old man probably, is Probably, probably. Um, Most likely. What he uh, probably like tested his friends, family members. Or, like, probably people he takes drugs with. Yeah, probably. I wonder how they got a kid in there. Because there's just a scene Pro where the terrorists kidnap a random child. A <laughs> no, that wasn't, a, that wasn't an actor. <laughs> None <laughs> of them are actors. <laughs> no, so he just oh, kidnapped man. a random kid. <laughs> that would be that would make this better. And then and the kid, the kid, the kid is so confused in the back with, with what's happening. Then like, Sue Kennex is like, charging energy blast. <laughs> Come down the energy blast. Security camera inoperable. Please Dude, the the security camera inoperable. I was wondering when that would come in, because uh, like the autistic child you are, Urshel, you just text me that randomly. Because so it's I, funny. It's, it's... You want to talk about weird stuff? You called me drunk the other day and said you were going to show me your penis. So let's, let's... No, I asked if you wanted to see it. Not... <laughs> I politely asked... Do it. Pull out right now. <laughs> I'll censor it for YouTube. <laughs> it's so small, no one would even see it anyway. Speaking of small <laughs> and... People get their monocle out like... Speaking of uncomfortable nudity, why is there a scene with a woman just dressing up for 10 minutes, a seventh yeah. of the running time, and then... She plays with nunchucks and like guns, and then we get the most uncomfortable scene where a man in a mask just touches her breasts for like five minutes. Yeah, that 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 fucking scene, man. Like, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder how he got her to like go topless for this scene. I don't probably I, <laughs> most likely probably one of Sucknick's drug buddies or Sup probably like mean? girlfriend. Suknik was yeah, like, could, I mean, I'll give you crap if you show your tits. Yeah. Most like, maybe she's a prostitute. No, I, I mean, don't think she you doesn't, afford she doesn't pull her mask off either, so I mean, I wouldn't put it past it. Yeah. yeah. There's, it's just so awkward, because it's ten minutes long, and she has a mask, she's looking at a gun, she just Also, much like a toddler, no she doesn't know how to dress herself or undress. It takes <laughs> her like two minutes. Dude, I mean, no, yeah, ten no, minutes. I've never seen something slower than that. Jeez. Honestly, I wonder. I wonder why Sook Nick put it in there. I don't. He was probably like, oh, "I'm making a horror movie. I need some titties." And then, <laughs> but I mean, granted, the entire movie, I was wondering why Sook and Nick put anything in there. Yeah, there's nothing. There's no, there was. There's not a singular second of this movie where I knew what was going on. And. Like, I know, like, I know the argument for a movie like this, right? It's, like, it's so, like, it's so out of this world, so confusing that you can't, like, do anything else and look away. But yeah, I, but, it, but it just things doesn't exist. work for me. And th things does <laughs> yeah. that concept, but things is highly entertaining. Yeah, like, I... But this one is weirder than things. This movie truly feels like somebody that is so disconnected from reality and they just gave him a video camera. Well, not even yeah, just disconnect. Like, there's no edit. I don't get it. Like the scenes, the the ending is also the beginning where like the zombie just bleeds and and then there's. But it's not a zombie. It's but I will say that was a part that I did grasp the second time that it was a man blasted by radiation. 
Yeah, I I don't uh, know where I the radiation came that. from, but if you listen to Sukunik's ramblings where he's clearly reading off of a paper but still can't read it, <laughs> he's like he's like George oh um, George got hit by radiation. And then this cuts to a random old man sitting in a chair for uh, two frames, and then it cuts. I was like, oh. the, the, uh, yeah, I know we talked about it, but the old man, he's just, he, they just intercut with footage of just him throughout the entire movie. The funny thing is, is that that's not even the first, it's not even the last time that Sukunik would do that in a different movie. Uh, in Space Psychos, uh, he does the same thing. But the old man is like one of the most influential radio talk show hosts ever. And I don't know how they got him, but I forgot who it was. Oh, uh, Joe Franklin. What? <laughs> yeah, yes, Joe Franklin is in Space Psychos. <laughs> and, and he's literally just sitting in a chair awkwardly, like kind of looking at the camera. He has no spoken dialogue, and they focus on him for 30 seconds at a time. Carl Sugnick probably we're not, we're just. not talking about Space Psychos. Though. Probably just break, uh, break, broke into his house and just filmed him. <laughs> Yeah, he was he was worried that he was going to be held at gunpoint, so he just kept looking at the camera, <laughs> thinking something else would happen. But then he just left. Dude, that's it's so like I want I almost want to go frame by frame there. Those two assholes that are sitting at a table that don't move. It's just a still image. Why? Because I think he thought it was a, a moving image. <laughs> he's probably so blasted out on acid he just couldn't tell what 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 motion picture is anymore he's just like look look i've been around people on magic mushrooms they can see <laughs> the movement in fact the that's all is, they though, see <laughs> but let's let's talk outsider art for a second here okay no, this is sure. this, this is the p i know no <laughs> Spooky's angry. I, Let's Francis, keep calling you, it. Fran Francis, you know that I don't like this movie. Okay, I, I'm playing must... devil's advocate here. I'm trying to be the, the middle man here, okay? This is the purest form of outsider art I have ever seen because you will never find someone that is more of an outsider than Sukhani. <laughs> this, man, this man knows not a singular person in the film industry. I legitimately don't even know how this man figured out how to get this on multiple VHS tapes. Probably did. I, it was probably just found somebody found this in a toilet and published it. <laughs> Honestly, like there's probably a bunch of movies like this going around like video stores in like the eighties and nineties. Like they probably just pick any fucking film. Like yeah. any distribution company could like pick this, something like this up and yeah. put it out there. I mean, that like was, a... like, a lot of shot on videos were that, but, like, at least even those that were made by kids, like, John McBride's early stuff, like, at least they're somewhat, somewhat Yeah, Tim, Tim, Ritter made, Tim Ritter made Day of the Reaper when he was 15, and I don't think if Carl Sukunik studied filmmaking for 20-plus years, he could make that movie. And I'm not even saying that's a very good movie, I'm just saying at least it's a movie. Like my problem yeah, with like plot. my problem with outsider art, especially in the context of <laughs> Alien Beast, is it almost feels just like watching somebody that a mentally challenged man has done and then mocking him for it. Which, look, yeah, look, I'm not above that. That's all I I've been doing. <laughs> That's all I've been doing <laughs> since the beginning of this podcast. But let's amount, call it what it is. Of, this isn't of, art. Like, this is a mental breakdown. That, <laughs> the amount of slurs about disabled people that Francis threw around with regards to Alien Beast in private is astonishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the amount of times that Spooky said I'm gonna kill myself during watching Alien Beast is also astonishing. <laughs> The amount of times he thought, a Andrew, you son of a fucking bitch, I'm going to drive down to fucking yeah. wherever the fuck you are and beat, you, beat your fucking ass, Look, you cunt. Look, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's exactly. pretty much exactly what he was saying, actually. That's, those are the exact words. I do love honestly, the word cunt. Honestly, this wasn't even my first choice for, like, for like film we could cover on the podcast. 
there's like one other film called After Last Season, uh, which oh. I. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Let me let me check this one on Letterbox. Oh, you haven't heard of that one? Didn't Horrible Reviews cr- uh, cover that one? I watch all uh, of your videos. I oh, think I th- it. did. I miss that one. I think uh, Red Layer Me it covered it too. Oh, maybe that was them. Because isn't that like a, the cartoon one or that weird? Yeah, that's it may like in fact be the most one half stars I've ever seen for a movie on Letterbox. Holy shit! <laughs> like usually Honestly. with these like really bad movies, you kind of get like the distribution of like the half and the five star. That's yeah. even ironic, but this one barely has any fives, and it's all one. <laughs> like even oh Alien Beasts, you get like normal, you know well-adjusted people like me and then you get space ghost andy who gave it a five and urshel who gave it a five okay so so andy gave after last season a one half which makes me really scared to watch it. <laughs> oh my god and, and you have not seen andy gave space beast uh, space or space beasts and- I've get, all of those movies space, have space, space or beasts in the title. We got Psycho Space Demons, you got Space Psychos, you got Beasts, you got Toxic Retards. <laughs> <laughs> that one's my favorite. That one's review. my favorite title. Yeah, that's my favorite the title of my it bibliography. It so entertaining, but I know that it's, it's just a lie, and the title's the best thing about the movie. Yeah. Someone gave uh, after last season a one half and said, this must be what people who hate David Lynch see when they watch his films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most accurate. This is like, this is probably what someone, this is probably what someone who dropped out of film school would have made if he like, I've... if it's he had so like no you, money. E- evil David Lynch be like, let's make last uh, season or whatever the name of that piece of shit is. I'm going to be the first to admit in my original review for Alien Beast, I did compare Sukunik to, to David Lynch. Oh my god. But I said that he was like doing it with like crayons. <laughs> is that is Alien Beast the one you called retarded begotten? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I think no, that's, 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 yes, that's... Matt, Matt has been saying that a lot recently too. Matt, for anybody wonder we always say Matt. Matt from Sick on Cinema I said that Alien Beast is retard begotten. <laughs> Because it kind of is. Basically. It, it's, it's the same length. No. It doesn't really go anywhere. And he forgot to put a soundtrack. <laughs> Honestly. I didn't even realize there's no soundtrack, but you're right. There's no soundtrack. Well, there's this, like, weird, like, mini thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. During, like, the stripping scene, like, a little, like like child that just smashed a keyboard casio piano yeah it just sounds like and it sounds like, like it's recorded well, a on child, like a tape a child on a, no a child with on a casio on a casio piano on a, on a uh, tape recorder is a um what's his name um oh it's gonna bother me the guy that made a uh, black devil doll from hell oh uh chester turner yeah yeah that's literally, but but in his movies that's a vibe yeah, we could have talked about those. Those movies are actually entertaining. We could have talked about any movie; it would have been more entertaining. No, I no, could have no, filled see, myself see, shit no, see, my Andy pants mentioned... this morning, and it would have Andy been mentions... more entertaining. It would have meant Andy... more. It, there would be a, a message, something. Even calling Andy... this retarded begotten is not fair, because at least begotten begotten is artfully done. This is this this has no artistic merit. It's just some asshole that pointed his camera at his dumbass drug addicted friends for two hours, and then he decided to narrate some. Something about his schizophrenic fucking hallucinations, being like, "Oh, the FBI, Iran." This is a movie that almost turns spooky into plague moth of movies where he's watching. He's like, oh my god, this is really bad. I just turned into plague moth. Subscribe Alien to my beast. subscribe to my subscribe to my Patreon. This movie is so bad that I can't show it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> No, Andy uh, mentioned after last season, which means that we'll have Andy on again to talk about this as the sequel because I I I'm, have a feeling this will be worse because it's at least fifteen minutes longer. <laughs> oh God, it, I'm pretty sure Spooky will probably just off himself on air. Look, I'm already on thin have, ice, and I, I will say I have been, I have Spooky knows most of my viewers from my channel know I purposely have like 
sought out the worst movies ever made i will not just like the room people say the room for like bad movies the room is like a masterpiece compared to 90 percent of yes. things that, I, that i own um but this one i've seen the holdra i've seen mm-hmm. things i've seen the room i've seen uh, a talking cat which is a fucking five <laughs> francis you can suck my cock um it's that was very aggressive, but we've, had, we've been arguing about this behind the scenes for anybody listening. Uh, David, Dakota's, David Dakota's best movie is A Talking Cat. It's better than Puppet Master 3. <laughs> spooky, pull, spooky pulling out the Glock about A Talking Cat. Uh, but Honestly. no, Alien Beast is a different level than even anything. The Holdra is entertaining. A Talking Cat is entertaining. Things is monumentally you- entertaining. Have you seen uh, Bigfoot versus D.B. Cooper? Yes. <laughs> That's the movie from David Dakota that made me say it again. <laughs> the, 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 the movie where the title is Borderline a Lie and it's just an excuse yes! for, for weird softcore gay porn. Uh, well, Cooper. most of his latest <laughs> filmography is that. I think even A Talking Cat has like a lot of... A ta- no, A Talking Cat is literally the most tame movie ever, but it, every scene is I acted so. in a way it's that it makes it look with... like it's the setup for a porn movie. <laughs> every scene. But it's also hilarious, okay? There's... Th- I, we're talking about I, well i mean i'm talking about anything but alien beast which i feel like should give my review of the movie uh i, w- I want to talk about a talking cat over alien beast uh but there's a joke in that movie where the guy or this lady keeps making these cheese puffs and they act like it's like a, a rider like a live or die situation like she's a realtor trying to get these people to buy a house and she's so worried about the cheese puffs like if they're bad they're not going to buy the house and uh, this this guy that she's like kind of falling for is just like this random middle aged man that just literally walked into her house one day for no reason, and then he's like, "Can you grab those for me?" He's like, "Oh, it's hot!" And he drops on the floor, and she like looks like she's gonna kill him on the spot after like all this romance. It's like the the cheese puffs fell, house of cards down. Dude. That movie's a masterpiece, Francis. <laughs> and you know what? You know what I'll say. Cool. The movies you can buy that movie on Amazon for ten dollars because Massacre Video doesn't own the fucking rights. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I I messaged Massacre Video about buying the rights to this to Alien Beasts. Yeah. Actually, you want me? To, you want me? You yeah. do you want me to read? Oh the yeah, email? yeah. Let's fucking let's put them on blast. Those are fucking assholes. <laughs> they, they, they don't watch this anyway. Yeah, let's not say where I watched they, Alien they, Beasts. I bought it legally. I actually Massacre. did. I actually did buy it illegally. Andy, so. do you have a copy of, or did you? Uh... I found it. It's on YouTube. Just look it up. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> say we'll be we'll have massacre no, video no, on okay. people's court no, again. You, yes. you watch you watch it on massacre streaming site yeah, that only has yes. ten movies on it. Yeah. We yes, was, that's where and, I that's yeah. where I watched it. Me yeah, and Andy both uh, both subscribed to that service and promptly yes. canceled because they have ten movies. But we watched yeah. it there. Well, I, I just saw an email from somebody that we are not doing distribution for anyway because he doesn't trust me. Oh, but well, you have anyway. the face of an angel. I would trust I'm not going to say who from I Master Video did this daughter. because it's not... <laughs> this is not from the person at Master Video that we always shit on. So I'm not going to say the name because I don't know if he's public, but... I'm not going to say my name either, even though most everybody knows it. Thank you for reaching out and inquiring about the rights to Alien Beast. We do own the rights to the film, as we bought it outright from Carl Sukunik. Congratulations on your new releasing label. It's always great to see new businesses in the industry at this time. We are not interested in selling the rights or doing sub-licensing deals for Alien Beast, but we appreciate your interest. If there's anything else we can assist you with, please do not hesitate to let us know. Could um, I get the rights of uh, Savage Vengeance, please? <laughs> see, no, see. See, you... that would, I would... I would gladly watch Savage Vengeance again over this movie, okay? Savage Vengeance, Donald Farmer gets shot in the penis, and that's entertaining Dude. more than anything in this movie. Dude, I'd watch Homicycle. I, I I'd watch yeah, Homicycle I twice over Alien Beasts. I, yeah, I don't know if I would, actually. Okay, I lied. I wouldn't. But <laughs> I, don't, I think I think I would watch it once over rewatching this, but I would not watch it twice. Let's, okay, I'd I, watch Thanks Killing I, I, twice. I, Instead of watching, I, actually, this. I, I would watch Thanks Killing over. I would, this, actually. I would watch Thanks Killing Three. Really laugh. I would watch Thanks Killing Three three times than watch fucking Alien Beast. 
Now I have a I, question for you, Andy. Did you rewatch this before recording? Yes, I have. You oh, better, Christ. you better, you son of a bitch. If you said no, I would have went to the Midwest and shot on your face for fucking... <laughs> I hate you for that. I'd rather have a heaven than watch this again. <laughs> I'm gonna remake Squirm Face on your fe face if you squirm didn't face, Squirm Face, Squirm Face. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta remake... No, you just gotta fucking remake Hershey's Kisses with me. <laughs> Okay, okay, now. <laughs> oh, no. I'm getting PTSD from <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> because because okay, I I'm not going to say where I have this from. I probably got it from the same place as Tanner, but I have every single one of Christopher Rage's movies, not just his scam movies. I have every Christopher Rage movie. <sighs> Even the it one to... where where the guys are all high on poppers. Probably. I well, mean, most aren't see they all? <laughs> I will say custom numbers. Uh, what was it? Custom three, because he he only has two official scat things, right? Custom three and custom six. Hershey's Kisses is a cut of like both put together. I have seen the entirety of custom three, and it's like August Underground. If August Underground was actually disturbing, because it's filmed in his basement, and it's just dudes eating shit out of each other's ass, and it, it's the one movie I've ever reviewed on my channel that it took me three times to finish the movie once because I actually threw up. Christopher Rage's seen, Custom have, 3, I or seen, If August Underground was seen, good. <laughs> I've seen all five Guso Milk movies in a row. No problem. No problem. That movie disturbed the fuck out of me. I don't know what the golden poop was that came out of that, man. It was yellow. I don't know what that color. And after I looked it up, I believe that that colored poop comes from AIDS. Mm -hmm. And I really hope it's just a filter over the film and he wasn't just ingesting AIDS shit because that would be even worse. <laughs> Let's see how many Christopher Rage movies I do have. No one, oh, no one knows what I'm on right now. You Let's almost, see. I, I get. Christopher Rage did make one actually entertaining movie, which was a Drive, where he plays a crossdresser. I have uh, 25 Christopher Rage movies. Yeah. So if anybody knows that there's more, Dude, I, you almost have as many Christopher Rage movies as I do Jess Frank movies. Yeah, but I didn't. Oh. Pay, I didn't. I don't. I don't think saying I didn't pay for these is an issue. Because, I, don't, I mean, don't think, you I don't won't think get sued guy. by Christopher Rage's estate. I mean, he's I dead. Think. I mean, he's dead. Exactly. You know, you know who else is dead? <laughs> Me after watching Alien Beast. <laughs> you know what we could have watched instead of Alien Beast? Anything. We could have watched a movie that had a one and a half out of five on Letterbox, which is Replicator. I have a copy signed by Brett McCormick, of course. This movie is wonderful. <laughs> okay, we could have been looking at. at tittied crocodiles for an hour and a half but instead we're looking at a, the workings of a very disturbed mind dude i i want to talk about the guy on the couch with the beard and like the long hair with grenades in front I of think him that, i think that was I his think carl. That is, yeah i yeah. think that is carl oh yeah it sounds like okay i didn't he, know he's that. yeah he is cast in his own movie is he point. using a grenade as a ha uh, ashtray he's a he's an auteur <laughs> He's an auteur. <laughs> Andy, Andy goes from saying, I'll never watch this movie again if you pay me, and he's like, he's an auteur, he's a master. I'm just at this, I'm just, I just want to see fucking Spooky's this reaction whenever I give this film phrase. You know the movie The Greasy Strangler? That movie's a documentary about Carl Sukunik. I just re <laughs> No, that's a documentary about my dad. <laughs> Yeah. Because he's a greasy my motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> my dad kind of looks like the the uh, prostitute from that movie. The tw the twist of this episode will be that Carl J. Suknix is actually Andy's dad, and this has all been a scheme for Carl Suknix to find us and to yes, murder us. Yes, but we us. won't know because Carl Suknix doesn't know how to use technology. He'll listen to Carrier Pigeon with a note on it, and then Noah will just be like hieroglyphics, like the fucking like Zodiac killer. <laughs> You've heard it here, folks. Carl Suknik, Zodiac Killer. And are this... they the same person? No, but I haven't seen them in the same room together. <laughs> no, actually, the, the, everybody knows that the Zodiac Killer is Ted Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> that's been proven. But I just want to go back to Carl Suknik just giving grenades to random people while we can't hear shit because there's no microphones. Give me a light. 
Yeah. Oh, back to Ted Cruz, too. In defense of Carl Sukunik, okay? Carl Sukunik could do a very poor job as a uh, government official, but Ted Cruz could never make Alien Beast. He could, he could only right. make poor decisions and say that he's going to Cancun to help his family. Yeah. Fuck Ted Honestly. Cruz. That's the most political thing I'll say in the podcast. I'll say something else political. Carl Sukunik shouldn't make movies anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I don't know if he you. has re- lately. I, has he made? What is his last movie? Space oh. Psychos for, was from 2007. Jesus. So, I, ass- I, I think... assume he's using the same. No, the, tox- the toxic retard is from 2015. Doesn't he know that that word was in PC in 2015? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it describes him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't... Well, let me see. Okay, so let's see how far Carl Sukunik's career has. Spans. Was Alien Beast his first movie? I Carl Sukunik made a movie, and I'm fi- I'm finding out these things are so recent. LSD Killer is from 2019. Did you gotta he track this. Publish it? Did he release it? Where can I find it? Not that I want to. Car- I don't it. know, Carl. Suk- it's very. That's the thing. I would. I'm a masochist, so I would totally watch all of his movies. But I, we're friends on Facebook too. I collect facebook friends like fucking infinity stones um or like the dragon balls but he has never responded to the dm i sent him which makes me sad banana box should just release a box set of carl j suknik and it comes with a no, rope tr- and a stool I... <laughs> dear god <laughs> i have so... I, on a on a, a legit note i that was one of the reasons i was trying to contact him <laughs> hey mr suknik big fan uh, can I release toxic retards, please? <laughs> you, you know, no, you want to talk about a good? You, what's? I keep getting off track because I fucking hate Alien Beast. Oh my god! <laughs> um, even, but, even the you know, even the Alien Beast lover, like he, he can't like he's just like, yep, it sucks. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to go support a real artist of <laughs> underground like Z grade entertainment, go buy stuff from Dave Wiscavage at Troubled Moon Films. He'll sign all of your DVDs, and they're six dollars a piece. The amount of entertainment and in, in fungicide is fifty trillion times more than Alien Beast. Don't go buy a sixty dollar DVD on eBay. Yeah, please. Don't, don't is that it. how much that movie costs now? Yep, sixty fucking bucks. I, I God damn. I I didn't spend that much, but I did see copies for that. I wow. spent more than MSRP. I will say that I spent. I think I spent thirty five dollars on this. Thirty-five dollars, but That's it comes with three much. movies. It comes with three movies. It comes no, it's the same movie cut over. over. <laughs> you spent thirty-five dollars for a recut of a movie that I, cost five dollars to make. I, 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 okay, <laughs> that's a little too far. I would say fifteen bucks. <laughs> I, I guess yeah. I guess you need to pay her five dollars and a pack of cigarettes for her to pull out a pull her tits out. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather see Carl Suknik pull his tits out. Really. And then there's some <laughs> dumbass filters that like people that made violent shit also use, where they just invert the color, and the stupid ass alien mutant guy just walks in this weird ass. France looking building it's just so dumb and then there's scenes where the alien beast is looking at stuff and he's clearly not even in the same place as the rest of the goddamn cast you want to hear something though you know what I'll say in defense of alien beast this movie is not Sukunik's longest movie Jesus Christ Sukunik has a movie called snuff tv that is over two hours (laughs) Oh, that sounds like a who, wonderful who, movie. Who, who wants to watch this on Letterboxd? <laughs> I don't recognize that guy. I and, don't. Andy just went to every Carl Sucknick movie and he's like, want to watch, want to watch, but it, you can't find any. You know, where? what accent does he have? Is it like Jersey-ish? Or like... I don't know where he's from. I don't think he's from planet Earth. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like he, you know that movie, The Mole People. <laughs> Suknik is like that. He just evolved a little bit further. <laughs> Carl Suknik is just, it comes from the same place as Tommy Wiseau. But Tommy Wiseau managed to get wealthy. Yeah, yeah. 
Carl Suknik managed to get No one knows damage. how. <laughs> Tom, Tommy is also like become self-aware and has adjusted to his fame so let's yeah. let's leave let's leave our lord and savior out well <laughs> as honestly i got has tommy was so becoming self-aware and his films kind of don't hit the same no because they... yeah self-awareness kind of ruins somebody who's that like far out far gone like if Carl I, J. Suknik, I, I still like him. I still like. Yeah, him. He, he seems like an all right, dude. All right. Barry, but, Barry Gillis is a little self-aware too, but I don't think he's self-aware that he thinks his movies are good. Yeah, I, I, I think, I, I, or that he knows they're bad. I mean, I think he's, I think he's self-aware in the fact that he knows people like them because they think they're bad. Yeah, but yeah. In his mind or straight. like speaking. The only director I would say is similar to Sicknick is James Wynn. Both are probably like oh, delusional. The guy that made a Birdemic. Oh yeah. See, that's the kind of movie I don't want to watch ever. <laughs> Birdemic too, though. Birdemic. The scene where gets, the, the scene where she gets stung by the jellyfish and she goes, <laughs> "I got stung." She's like, "What? What happened?" He's like, "I got stung by a jellyfish, a giant jumbo jellyfish." <laughs> This shit cracked me yeah, up. So that is that like, is a great scene, uh, but fucking James Wynn has made the same movie with almost the exact same plot throughout his fucking filmography. Watch like his like one of his films was like so bad he didn't fucking release it for a long time until like Riff Tracks like got no, the rights yeah, to it. Severin, like Severin just found like found the found the movie and they're like oh we're gonna release it for and they paid 10 grand to release that what birdemic yeah birdemic originally it was released by severin and they openly say like oh we paid 10 grand to release that and i yeah, think they... i've got the i've got the blu-ray yeah they probably yeah me so too much money from that that's yeah, probably how they just... got all the rights to the Jess Franco movies. They just shout been out, writing that pandemic money. <laughs> if anybody from Severn is listening, please release the Holdra. I will pay you. I will pay you for the rights to the Holdra. I tried to find the director online. I'm happy that, with Severn. Severn right now is my favorite company. I can't like release anything yeah. you want, Severn. I love you. <laughs> and... Severn, yeah, Severn's pretty good. I don't have any beef with Severn. No, no, but like I'm just saying, like they they released. I I'm they can after this they can release. I don't know Mein Kampf on a movie disc. I don't <laughs> care. I, I still love them. <laughs> they released the manual. And that's released Triumph of the Will though on Blu-ray. The which one? Triumph of the Will. Oh, they no, can I think do whatever they want. I think that's Synapse. I think Synapse released. Oh, Synapse. That. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They released Triumph of the Will. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> It used I mean, to be on uh, Amazon. There was a time and there was a time in the in our history where you could buy a Blu-ray of Triumph of the Will look, on Amazon. Say what you will. Yeah. It's a very important movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's important for a bad reason. I mean, you know, it's still it's important. Good, it's like it's like yeah, it's it's propaganda. Look, yeah, yeah, but Alien Beasts exist. That got released too, and that's not good for anybody. At least Triumph See, of the Wheel did something are, for some no, people. Alien Beast, Alien Beast gave me hope that, like, even if you... I heard this was a joke, because after Fuck the Devil came out from uh, American Film Genre Archive, um, someone said Fuck the Devil really shows that no matter how bad your movie is that you made when you were a kid in the 90s, AFGA will pick it up and release it on Blu-ray 20 years later. <laughs> Honestly, that would probably be, be massacre video if they released stuff. Oh, also, not yeah, the director of that because Banana Box releasing in him may have something in the future, so we won't talk about that. I kind of love and hate those movies. Like they're clearly dog shit, but and even the thirty minute cut is too long. But they they're I, charming. I haven't seen those. They're charming. They're fun. I they're... I just love the title. Fuck the devil. And fuck just the devil like... to the return of the fucker. <laughs> I want to make films like that. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck professionals. Fuck equipment. I just want to pick up a goddamn camera and film, like, pure art. 
pure fucking cinema. And oh my god. <laughs> Andy, Andy out here spending forty thousand dollar on film school to make fuck the devil three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll probably like, it'll pro I'll just release in like some like pretentious yeah. like film, like some art film, art theater, art uh, art house theater. Andy's Sorry, first man. feature film, Alien Beast Two: Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just Andy saying, yeah, security camera inoperable. You know what I will say, though? Alien Beast was not the worst movie I watched this week. It's impossible. And you, and you, no, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, you I mean yeah, about you I won't, too. I won't, I won't call them out uh, by name, even you, though I should. You mean, uh, I'll do it. You mean about you too. Don't, I'll bleep don't, it no. out. Oh. No, yeah, bleep that. <laughs> you can say I can say Human Hibachi Two is the worst movie I watched this year that came out this year. Okay. But did you watch? People that follow me on Letterbox already saw that I posted that. And everybody yeah. who follows you, Mini Bachi Two, did too. <laughs> no, 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 no. We won't. We, I won't start beef with anybody. Damn. I'll just say that I was sent pictures of my own review. That's all I'll say. It's like, yeah, I know what oh. I said about the movie. It was dog shit. Yeah. Oh. Kind of like, kind of like I, don't, I, don't, I don't like, I don't like getting sent pictures of my own reviews. It's like that this has a very threatening aura to it. <laughs> yeah, kind of like, like kind of like for, when, for anybody watching, I am selling a copy, so it's pretty good if you want it. I'll sell it for you for lower than MSRP, and I'll include the prop from the movie. I'm not... Honestly, I'll pass on that. But thanks. <laughs> shout, shout, shout out to the prop as being this. What is it? We can't see your camera. Is not it's a, good. It's a it's a it's a piece of a prosthetic leg. Oh hell yeah! Yeah. Mm. You should eat it on camera. <laughs> I, I'm gonna start eating a picture of the director of Human Hibachi every day, <laughs> in, until they until they block me on all accounts. Yeah, just like I'm very petty. For anybody that doesn't like follow my Instagram, oh, I'm, I'm very petty. I'm I'm so sick of people. <laughs> Not the listeners of the podcast, of course. Um, I love that's how, all that's my how, subscribers. That sounded, no, that that sounded facetious. I'm not being facetious, but okay. This is a little rant about Banana Box releasing. Okay, Spooky knows this, but for anybody wondering, someone sent me a mixtape. That they said they wanted to release by Banana Box releasing. I won't say the name of this person because number one, I didn't know them. Number two, why would I do that anyway? But they sent me a mixtape. I opened it up and it started out with animal testing within the first 30 seconds of the movie. And the, I was like, okay. It had music. I'm like, okay, well, let me just see where this is going. If, if you are two minutes into a mixtape, and you're just like using like the same clips of Terrible Meal and everything. I used Terrible Meal in my first mixtape. It was a terrible mixtape. For anybody watching, I believe totally twatted a bad review on Letterbox. It's bad. I'm gonna be the first to admit. On my way, on my mixtape. way, <laughs> on my way right now. And he's just gonna give it a half star and like this man doesn't like alien Carl beast. Carl dot Kr dot o seven holding down the fourth though by giving it a good score. Shout out to Carl. Shout out yeah. to Carl. Um, I do think. I do think my second one is better, and I think Dick Twix is better. But anyway, this guy, this fucking guy, puts the terrible meal thing, and then he does puppy stomp within the first five minutes. Oh my god! Um, so I use so I use some choice language, and I also will say if you're if you're mixtape, your mixtape is a gore comp, or is like macabre ten, uh, best of smashed bodies, whatever. If you watch those, fine. I don't care. But do not send those to <laughs> me and, and want me to like release these. Please. I don't for anybody thinking that I will release your stuff just because I'm an independent label, please stop sending me stuff. Yeah. You can reach out to me. If you have something you want to release, I'll watch it. But I'm not gonna release it if it's like that. And there are plenty of people that will release your shitty gore comp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like massacre. <laughs> they'll, they'll that would get there be eventually. funny. Holy Lewis just starting to release mixtape gore mixtapes. <laughs> that's what pisses me off. Just... Like, that's why I made my mixtapes is because the term mixtape became synonymous with like the the. Oh, I shudder every time I say the disturbing movie Iceberg, but the, the mm -hmm. gore comps of Bill Sarah mixtape. It's not a mixtape. 
That's a gore compilation. A mixtape has Ooh. editing and is supposed to be entertaining. Mm-hmm. You ever seen the horror church? Yeah. The horror church should just be the basis for every mixtape. Actually, yeah. You should all the making them. Yeah, a- AGFA released some great mixtapes. Yeah, we should have. Uh, everybody, including myself, I should just hang it up. The Horror Church exists. That mo- The Horror Church is so good, in fact, that it actually makes every other like mixtape irrelevant. Like, if you want like a picture of what they should be, watch that. It, it is genuinely one of the funniest pieces of media I've ever seen. It's 45 minutes, and it's free on their website. Yeah, or they you could like... DVDs. Just go support them. I, I have a patch... The Horde Church patch on my battle jacket. Hell it's yeah. Stuff. Or you could like watch stuff like the everything is terrible stuff. Yeah. Like their yeah, those uh, are good. doggy yeah. the doggy woggy ones. That one's Uh-oh. amazing. Oh, I'm feeling I'm feeling a Herschel vacation. Into the closet. Oh, into the closet we go. Into the closet to find my mixtapes. <laughs> this guy lives in the closet. <laughs> That's for big true. I'm not ashamed of who I am. You shouldn't be. The only thing you should be ashamed of is giving five star to alien beasts. I did once. It's it one. Is one. It's one time too one too time. many. I'm also judging you right now, indeed, for doing the <laughs> same and not to, not to re, not changing the rating. You gave it five on a I'll rewatch, stop. Andy. On a rewatch. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What happened to your brain? <laughs> Alien beast happened. That's what. I was a normal person before I watched Alien Beast. I, I was a normal person before I watched Alien Beast Gone Sexual. My next YouTube video. <laughs> the funniest thing would be if uh, if you went to you decided to go to film school after watching Alien Beasts. <laughs> if you were inspired by it, like oh, I gotta do art. <laughs> By the way, I'm not judging. I went to like film school too, so fist bump. You know what I will say though? To all the motherfuckers out there putting gore comps and having their stuff, they don't have an official Blu ray of the. Oh, that, that has a pooping anus on it. Okay, uh, your that's, cam- that's not YouTube friendly. Your camera is too bad. We can't even. It's, yeah. it's animated. People are posting this uncensored online anyway. But look at this. Look at this. My dead format release. Of totally they released my mixtapes. Look at this. That's also a shitting anus. <laughs> There's a lot of shitting anuses. That's well, kind this. of a you, theme you, with Urshel. Those gore comps, those gore comps you, got a, you got a slip cover? <laughs> you, got you, got a sl- cover. you got a You got a gore comp, but can it do this? <laughs> can it do this? Do you have reverse? Does reverse- yours have your logo on the back? <laughs> do you have a reverse? Did yours sell out? Huh? Flexing Herschel here. Mine sold out. <laughs> well, it's easy to but sell anyway, out when they make 10 copies. What I wanted to get was these, though. <laughs> Everything is terrible DVDs. The only reason these are wrapped is because I watched them as digital files and bought them later. Mm-hmm. Like I need to yeah. watch The Great Satan. It's the only mixtape I've seen that's on Tubi. Wait, didn't AG... AGFA didn't release like a, a mixtape with Satan? Satan. Um, with Satan. Satan. There's, there's their smut without smut. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's which is one. like the porn with all the sex cut out, which is pretty hilarious. Yeah. Oh, shit, the Speaking Great Satan is on Tubi Canada. I do Sorry. have I do have Doggy Woggy's Poochie Woochie somewhere, though. Yeah. Somewhere. Speaking, speaking of porn, have you ever seen Bad Pussy? I yes. haven't, but Urshel, Yes, it's so course. funny. It is so funny. <laughs> yes. that, that, that's, the, that's the least sexy porn ever made, because the, not only is there, like... Not only is it just two weird-looking people attempting to have sex, like... The like, man can't even get it hard. They just argue for like 40 minutes in that movie with nothing else happening. <laughs> and it's like... And there's like this lady with the shittiest Batman costume bouncing on one of those like yoga balls yeah. in the <laughs> forest. <laughs> that movie's something. That, that's gotta be one of my favorite vintage adult films. Other than Dracula Sucks. Dracula Sucks always be my favorite. Yeah, as, a, as as the preeminent her, Jamie Gillis fan of the modern era, I'm gonna call uh, you out, Andy. Though you gave Bat Pussy a half star, you gave Bat Pussy a half star, but you gave <laughs> Alien Beasts a five. At least, at <laughs> least Bat Pussy was shot on film. <laughs> Just that should you, give it yeah. a better rating than Alien Beasts. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was if, ironic. If you want to see fat ironic. elderly rednecks, rednecks try and fail to have sex, <laughs> yes, I do. Stop judging me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should. Look. You should. Uh, on one of the episodes, uh, we should do the uh, ET porno, like ET por, ET last <laughs> vagina, <laughs> where the ET is the female, because that that's not awkward at all. God, what's the, what's the weird? What's the weirdest one that I've seen? There was one that I watched, like I think it's called The Devil Inside Her. God, that movie was that movie is so coked up. I was like in tears. There's like this like guy that's supposed to play Satan and he literally has kiss makeup on and he just comes out from behind trees and his eyes are like this wide. He's just like <laughs> <laughs> That movie's wonderful. Dude, the the you should, like You should like take a screenshot then and like make it like your black metal album cover. Speaking of album covers, I have to sh I was so proud of myself when I found the picture of a uh, Lewis and uh, Joe oh from Vinegar God, Syndrome yes. at the People's Court thing, and they're looking like the yes. hottest new indie album. So I said, this is the Boutique Boys. The Boutique uh, bo Boys. Bo bo bootleg Blues. The Bootleg <laughs> um, Honestly, you kind of, her show, you kind of look like the the bassist or lead guitarist of like a Midwest yeah. emo band yeah, he does. from like 2012 he or looks, something. Uh, yeah, he should be in sport. I used to, I used to be a bass player for a metal band around here. Holy sh! Of course. <laughs> yeah, you know. I yeah, I didn't before. know that. I don't. I didn't That's even cool. know you played music, dude. Yeah, I, I didn't know that phone. either. What the? I play saxophone. I was the vocalist. I, oh, I you were a band a kid. Bit. I'm a one man band that no one <laughs> listens. I have. I actually have a band cam for my noise project too. You know how many sales I had last month? Uh, one. How many? Z zero. Well. You are like a no that. you are like a noise uh, you release a noise album on Bandcamp. Those get released every five seconds, you know. You release noise music, you deserve to not make money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'll say though? The thing that separates mine from others is that it's somehow worse. Yeah. You should hit up Carl J. Suknik and like to tell him you want to make the soundtrack for his next film and it's just your noise project. Yeah, the noise project is this the sound that goes on in his head. Yeah, because that would be better yeah. than the dialogue in this, which I can't understand, because the only time there's dialogues, the microphone is too far, and it's just it's just people and echo. People, people shit on me for recording on the floor with a headphone microphone with no editing. Bro, watch Alien Beast. My channel looks like... Yeah, honestly, your camera game. looks like a fucking 4K uh, and 8K red honestly. camera compared... <laughs> For one of my film classes, someone like showed like uh like a film that's basically like a shit joke, but with someone turning into Mario. That that fat film has better production values than Alien Beasts. Did one of your teacher make you uh, watch the film Wavelength by any chance? Wavelength? Yeah, it's a forty-five minute shot of a window directed by michael snow no you're lucky i don't then. think so you're lucky then because <laughs> i'd say that uh i think i'd rather watch I... alien beasts than fucking wavelength from michael snow because at least alien beast is other is, is something else than a 45 minute shot I... of a window there, there well, is my... a worse movie or not a worse movie a worse looking movie that I want to cover on the podcast eventually, which you know about, but it's genuinely one of my favorite movies. It's called My Lovely Burnt Brother and His Squashed Brain. It's, yes. this, like, it's this like early or mid 90s Italian movie that's like shot on video, but the video camera is like from the dollar store. But oh my God. I. If you... oh. So good. My, one of my teachers had us watch this one film made by this director who made like the three hour movie about the woman oh, and it, the woman cleaning and, her apartment yeah I want her apartment I want it see. looks worse it looks as bad as alien beasts <laughs> and I didn't even finish that <laughs> yeah I'd the, take the that over that, alien beasts let's be honest that, that movie that's like okay I'm gonna have to find the name but the French name 
I know what you're talking about. She's just sitting in her apartment yeah. and nothing happens for three hours. No, so no, like, that's like no. I'm talking Arcane's about her the... film, the film she made before she killed herself. Oh, oh. wait, what's, what's I think it's called No Home Movie. No Home. Okay, because I actually want to see that. That uh, of course you do. That one where she just uh, sits horrible. in her apartment. Sits it's her horrible. Apartment. It's horrible, spooky. Can we not be pretentious for like three seconds? Oh yeah, yeah. it's uh, Jeanne Dillemer, 23 Commerce Quay, 1080 Bruxelles, and it's three hours oh, and a half. Uh, I okay. As someone who's seen this, okay, I'm gonna be the voice of reason versus all these fucking pretentious ass art students who are giving this like saying it's the best movie ever made. If I wanted to watch a fucking middle aged woman sit in her apartment for three and a half hours, I'd go to my sister's. <laughs> That uh, go no. bit. Well, we, uh, oh my god i i'm getting flashbacks when i watch that movie i forgot the british film institute or something said that was the best movie ever made and they're like it's boring but that's the point why why who picked up a fucking camera is like this movie's we gonna be should, boring we should send a copy of alien beast to the british film institute <laughs> and see they, what they, they think. probably do like this is like it's a subversive masterpiece of they outsider would. art. Studio. They would. That's the issue with all those people that think they're smart. It's not. It's stupid. And, and well, this is kind of, and, I and think I'm smart too. The guy who's watching Burglar from Hell tonight. <laughs> and it's coming. <laughs> and it's coming from a guy that gave a begotten a five. <laughs> begotten is a five. I know it is. Yeah, the Beyond I, is a great movie. Uh, Everyone begotten, should watch that. Not the Beyond. Begotten. The Beyond also is a yeah. well, the Beyond too. I mean, yeah, it's just I, I let's not shit on like pretentious uh, people when you give you give Beyond a five. Can I? Can I? I'm not. I don't want to do it because he's a well-respected member of the extreme cinema community, and he does make cool props. But you want to talk about a bad movie too? <laughs> James Bell's Tantrum. Okay, I'm gonna get some shit from this from people listening because I know a lot of people like this movie. But redneck begotten is not my vibe. Okay? <laughs> begotten begotten Wait, with incest. It, I thought no, it, no, it, no. If you watch it, I'm genuinely being serious with you. It looks like method begotten. <laughs> That's genuinely what the vibe of that movie is. I'm telling you, it's like begotten if it was made on a five dollar budget and a pack of cigarettes. Except well, not as entertaining as that sounds. It's mainly just a dude with uh, <laughs> this paper mache head on fire for the majority of the movie. Yeah, because at least I've gotten that. And, like, and, and, and jokes on me. Before I watched the movie, I bought Tantrum too. <laughs> also, James Bell, I you you seem like a very nice person. I am going to be placing a props order. If anybody's watching, I'd have no beef with him. Okay, I just don't like the movie. If you like it, that's fine. This is an objective thing. Okay, I know that you make these yourself. Power to you. But can you cut the DVD? Oh yeah. So it fits the case, like, dude. dude I, I'll, I, I have and another... speaking as someone that had that issue, and my banana box releases used to be like shrunken. This is an issue. This I don't, I don't, I don't like it. All the James Bell fans are gonna be in the comments of this video, like Herschel's canceled. So same thing. So you know the guy that made a uh, cat call Omega Violence. You can either yeah. buy it Patrick from USX, Fortin. yeah, you can buy it from uh, Underworlds of Rosa or from Patrick Fortin himself, and same issue. Sir, you know it's gonna be in a Blu-ray case, why is it all out? Wait, really? Yes. I didn't buy from it, uh, Rick is the homie, maybe I should just, I should just contact Rick and be like, Rick, I got some issues. <laughs> this is a DVD case, <laughs> why is it so small? Why did you make look at it? Look at this, you want to see, you want to see how you make, look, I do this literally with, you want to see how Banana Box releasing operates? I have just spindles of blank DVDs, and I use a $10 cutter that I got from Staples, okay? And, look at this. Look, it. It fits. Yeah, it fits. It does. You know. Also, can we appreciate my girlfriend's art style for a second? This is a cannibal JV. And it's a smiley face made out of a penis and breast. We can clearly see that through a camera. We're gonna mm -hmm. have to do so much censoring in this video. Also, because nobody, because Spooky ruined the entire Orange Crate thing. He's like, my buddy Herschel sent me this movie. Why? 
Can we just talk about this? I just Can we talk about when update. you had this a video and you're like, my buddy Herschel sent this to me. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a new release from him. I said it was out of print. But the whole point... The whole point of, 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 of the Orange Crate is like Fight Club. We, are you we don't talk about the Orange Crate. I literally asked well, that, you. That's literally I, a pinned post. I literally I, asked no, you. You said, can, you said, can I show this? I said, yeah, just don't mention the name or that I send it to you. You're like, yeah, my no. buddy Herschel sent this to me. I, I said you sent it. I didn't say you made it. Yes, you did. You say I, it's a release from him. Nope. You did. Maybe. And after you made that video, I got like five follow requests. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. Look. But you know what, though? I did stick to my guns. For anybody that wants to join the Orange Crate, it's closed. Oh, yeah. Genuinely. There are people that ask me, they found out about the Orange Crate and they said, can they get in? No, you cannot. That's the point. Mm -hmm. You can't get in. Mm -hmm. The doors are locked. Mm -hmm. Not that you'd even want to. This isn't. This is pretty good. It's pretty good. good yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's... It's, it's pretty good. It's a pretty nice release. It's got AI upscaled. By, it's very professional. You're fucking. You're you're gatekeeping your best work. <laughs> <laughs> That's for true. You're, you're like, oh, I don't allow people. Literally, instead, I'll I'll just send you a DVDR with Sharpie. Best work, someone please buy this. <laughs> I was so proud of this release, but we've sold ten copies. This Andy, is a release of 25 Andy, people. Gonna buy it? Come on, I'll give you a good deal. Oh. I'll give you a good deal. You, you pay me and he just drops how off. Much, how much for 10? How much for 10 how copies for 10? of this? Oh, God. Um, we talk business off the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. We're almost... Also, also, I apologize to Taylor from Colt Collectibles. If anybody got their releases, I there was a few of these I forgot to put stickers in. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, but th let's not talk about Orange Crate Wear. Yeah, you want you want to talk about that work. genuine best movie ever made? Let's talk Flash Dance. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk fucking Flash Dance? <laughs> Flash Dance is the best movie ever made. Okay, this this movie is considered a classic, but this is a this is a romance movie about a woman who's a model slash exotic dancer who's also a welder, Look, and she okay. doesn't wear and she Look. also doesn't wear eyewear. Okay. Most of the time that she's welding. I'll be I'll be the professional here. We're almost out of time. What are your final thoughts? We'll do a round table on Alien Beasts. Yeah, Andy, you can start. Okay. I'll say this. Alien Beasts, although objectively, is not a good movie. That's an understatement. <laughs> understatement of the fucking century. Tell Tell me, have you has anyone made something like Alien Beasts, or even attempted to make something like Alien Beasts on purpose? No, and yes, they should. yes, Sukun <laughs> yes, Sukunik did. He just made sp toxic retards. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna interject. It's your final thoughts. Okay. I'll, I'll keep myself from. I'll restrain myself. I think, honestly, if you are teaching like. <laughs> film students or anyone how to like make a fucking movie show them this and they'll tell you don't show them the room or birdemic or any like well-known like worst movie ever show them fucking alien beast they'll know that movies aren't supposed to look like this and they'll learn it quick just make them watch through that whole scene of the woman like getting dressed Getting groped by that dude in the army suit, and they'll fucking understand. Just, just like, and that's why I think Alien Beast should be in the National Film Registry. <laughs> it's gonna be at MoMA next month. It's gonna be it's like, yeah, it's, in, it's it's even better. It's in Bleeding Soul. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Urshel, what are your final thoughts on? Alien Security beast. camera inoperable. Security this, camera inoperable. This whole thing has been a ruse. I love this movie so much, and everybody should go buy it. No. Yes. Go, no. go support Massacre Video. <laughs> go, go, go on the Shout out to Lucas. Shout out to Lucas. Lewis. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I want the rights to Alien Beast. Give it to me, you piece of shit. I'll get. I want. 
Look, Lewis, we'll give you the same amount you gave to Carl Suknik. We'll give you $30 and a Happy Meal. Lewis, Lewis, I'll give you the same amount that you paid for the watches and nothing. <laughs> the one dollar, dollar, dollar store drop shipping operation watches. Also, shout out to the watches being so small that like anybody with a larger wrist can't even fucking wear them. Yeah. Well, who would have guessed from toy, toy watches, though, or from the dollar store? Yeah. My final thoughts are I, I implore you, I am begging of anybody listening to this, do not watch Alien Beasts, not as a joke, there is no, nothing. No, you, you know that this is literally just encouraging people, because if I heard this yes. on podcast, I would seek it out. Okay. okay, this is the best movie ever, there's nothing wrong with it, it's a masterpiece, <laughs> it's great, honestly, it's so amazing that you shouldn't, you shouldn't watch it, because it's so great, you'll never see anything better than this in your life. See, that would still make me watch it, but like, yeah. it, may be, it may go a little bit further down the watch list, because you said it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Every time if, Spooky says something's good, I'm like, yeah, I'll watch that later. Yeah, it, fucking motherfucker. And you're out there, like, being like, oh, I love Flashdance, but I won't watch an actual Flash good Flashdance is a masterpiece! <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm gonna watch a talking cat instead have you, of watching... Have you seen, have you seen Flashdance? No! Have you seen a talking cat? No, why would I? And you can't, because you can't talk on them, because they're... Alright, that'll be my next, that'll be my next, like, appearance... We'll just make Spooky watch a talking cat. But see, but that would be a good episode because that movie's so funny. <laughs> Nobody well, would be being tortured. Spooky likes things. Spooky didn't say, he's like, oh, this is going to be bad. And then he gave it a four and a half. It, that's the issue with Elden Beast. Is, as I said in my review, there is nothing redeemable. It's not even fun. It's not even fun to make fun of because you're laughing at a mentally deranged drug addict. Idiot. Yeah, but that's what I said. We should watch a talking cat because then you're just laughing at David Dakota. Who yeah, made like 200 movies. Yeah, including Nightmare. And most Assistance. of them, most of them have shirt, almost naked dudes with big muscles and shit. Yeah. And Honestly, it... my biggest problem with David Dakota is not a talking cat. It's Doctor Alien. That movie is boring as fuck. I watched that and I was like, what? I heard so many people say this is like a this was a classic of the video rental store, bro. I watched it and I I literally was like almost falling asleep. My uh my uh, my David Dakota hot take is that even he couldn't make um puppet Ma- the puppet master movies worth watching. Mm. <laughs> I really don't like those movies. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan, but I um, do think this is the best one. How many fucking puppet master movies are there? Like Too 20? You, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you'd be shocked, but yeah, it's probably about that. I have, like, the first nine on, like, a DVD I bought for $5 at Walmart. <laughs> That's where you should buy Puppet Master. <laughs> buy at the clearance section of fucking Walmart. I, for, like... I, don't, I don't know how to describe it, but Puppet Master is a franchise that kind of has Dollar Tree vibes. It does. Yes! <laughs> it's well... basically, like... <laughs> It kind of has the, you know, the movie, the movie rental store as a kid, and it's the only movie that's rated R that they'll let you watch. Yeah, because it's there's nothing that happens in it. There's, there's like my, no. My dad, this. I was so excited to watch that movie as a kid, and my dad let me watch it. And I was like eight, and I watched it, and I didn't remember it even like the week going forward. And I was an eight year old that was allowed to watch a rated R movie. So if I didn't remember it, you, you know that shit was mid. Sorry to say it. I, I hate to say it. You know, the other, like, Charles Band produced Killer Dolls movie he made in the A's was alright. But that was written made by, uh, Stuart, yeah, written Dolls, by Stuart Gorin. Dolls is like a masterpiece, especially compared yeah. to a Puppet Master. Aaron is really seen again. Did you see that? Yeah! Their, their video their video store box set that I was texting. Oh, I texted yeah, your yeah, friends yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Part of that. I, thought, I thought Scream Factory still had the rights, but I guess not. No, they I don't. Guess... It's out of print. No. Yeah, I have it. I have it with the slip cover because I'm cool like that. I have. You know what I found out that I'm cool for having is the female vampire from Just Franco, the Redemption Entertainment. I looked it up. It's eighty bucks now. Yep, that's. Uh... You know how much I bought it for? Twelve dollars or fifteen dollars. It was like two months ago. Yeah. yeah like it's... what happened yeah. in this amount of time? Uh, a lot of the Redemption titles are starting to be out of print, especially the older DVDs, because I don't think Female Vampire was re-released in their new line. Is Does it still have the Red Cross on the spine? 
Uh, probably. Because that's the really older titles, and a lot of them are either out of print or they didn't make it through the, the second generation of Redemption. Yeah, they didn't make it through the Redemption, Redemption. Because I have, uh, I have um, a fascination. Best Redemption release, Maichan's Daily Life movie. That was so out of nowhere, man. I just still... I'm still confused why they released that on Redemption. No, I was too, but I'm so glad they did because I genuinely loved that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of like rare stuff, <laughs> did you get the copies of uh, Night <laughs> Dreams from uh, Sin? Sorry. Yeah, I get, <laughs> I get everything from it. I don't. Damn, I'm... those fuckers! That sold out fast. They still have copies of uh, Gourmet Zombie Chef from Hell, yeah. and I own a copy of that. Th shouts to Matt. Yeah, shout you out should to like. Him. Go get you your should... Sin film. Prison. Shout out to yeah, Matt. Should... First release, uh, having press disc and cover art that actually fits versus my first release. <laughs> yeah, support and Matt. It's... Yeah, maybe and it's he not should. Secret. He's not gatekeeping his stuff like Urshel is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't gatekeep banana box. I gatekeep orange grade. Exactly. Which is Matt. Your if best you're listening to this, releases. <laughs> buy the rights to Carl Sugnick's films from <laughs> no. Lucas and Massacre. I think All, Matt hated everyone... this movie more than me. Well, like, I don't think Come on. he's a Carl Sugnick fan. Nobody should Matt, be. Matt, if you mention Alien Beast to Matt, he actually gets angry. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's why I mentioned it to him. So he could be the like sec the second one that Matt also gets angry from, and he says, "Fuck that movie!" Is a uh, uh, um, uh, Savage, oh, Savage. Savage Suburban Sasquatch, <laughs> which I love. And I and he watched other movies by Wes Cabbage and gave them high scores, but he will not raise the one half of that. He that that must be the biggest difference in Matt's letterbox for a director because he gave that a one half and he gave Fungicide a four and said it was one of the most fun B movies he's ever seen. I'm gonna be honest, Suburban Sasquatch looks like absolute dog shit. <laughs> it's fun. Would you okay? Would you and, rather and watch? He is a very sweet man as well. Yeah. All right. Would you rather watch Suburban Sasquatch over Alien Beast? Dude, I'd rather get my balls nailed to a fucking four by two. <laughs> I, I would watch, watch Suburban Sasquatch on my own accord, like, right now. You're, you're probably gonna do that. I know you. You're gonna change your <laughs> no, mind. No, I saw, I, I'm, I'm like, halfway through his filmography. I need you're to too, you're too autistic. That. You're gonna be like, oh, it's Chicken Time, and then go watch fucking Suburban Stop. Sasquatch again. It was, <laughs> it was Chicken Time, and you said that in the last podcast, and no one even knows what Chicken Time I means. Know, what I the fuck is Chicken people. Time? Fuck. I was sitting at work. <laughs> And I was really hungry, and I wanted Chick Fil A, and um, I'm not gonna say where I work because that's a little too far. But um, my I... my coworker went to lunch before me, and he came back, and I was so hungry that I audibly just looked, and I'm like, "Chicken time." This is one and time, I, and, and I texted Francis. I said, "I think they think I'm autistic now." This is your co-host. <laughs> this is the man. This is the man that you trust for movie time. opinions. Some, some, one of our listeners, please, please, can we get fan art going on? Someone yeah. did a Chicken Time and Sticky Nichols fan art. I would, oh. I would pay you. Yes. If someone, if, if, if someone wants to do T-shirts for us, I will commission you. I'll blow your cock. You do that do for it. free. Speaking of which. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Andy, for showing up. We'll have links to your socials. We'll have link to buy stuff from Banana Box, not bu but not the Orange Crate, because that's too good for you fucking poor peasants. And uh, <laughs> this is... Am I part of the Orange Crate, by the way? Can I be part of the Orange Crate? I thought you were, but if you're not, then yes. This... <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a request. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tried to, I tried to send requests, but Instagram limits how many you can do in a day. Yeah. So I was like going through people I was wanting to do, and it just literally prevented me. So there's a few people that I've missed out on. So if you're not part of it, just you know. But to the listeners, you're unless not I invite, unless I invite you, you're not, you're, you're not coming. Sorry, it's yeah. not because I don't like you. It's because it, it literally does come down to production cost. Yeah. And me not being able to sell enough of them to cover it. Exactly. Because yeah. Because from a sales point, I am equally as proud of both of these releases, but this one cost about a third as much as this one to make. Mm -hmm. so. so, 
All right, people. Thank you, thank you, Andy. We'll uh, we'll probably have you on again to watch another. Yeah. So what's that? What was that movie? movie that I hate. That I hate all this. What was that? What was that? Um. Oh, well, I'll probably I'll probably fucking subject you to after last season. After That's and, the one. Uh, I will I will watch it. I'm gonna watch it. This and week. um. And uh. Spooky's probably going to uh. I'm pretty sure after he watches that, he'll probably just drive all the way from like whatever part of Canada he is down to Minnesota and fucking beat my ass yeah. till I'm up, till I'm like a grapefruit or yeah. something. Yeah, you fucking grapefruit, your man. Yeah, I'm a grapefruit. <laughs> and on that poetic note, thank you guys and uh, see you guys on the next podcast, which we know the movies, but we won't spoil and. Uh, Yep, that's Alien Beast sucks ass. Bye bye. <laughs>